Hi Ben, lovely to meet up with you this morning, do some work on your short game, just a quick recap on the key points that we discussed relating to your chipping, uh, establishing some baselines and obviously the variables that then need to be added to create certain shots that are required. Uh, on the left was you at the start of the session, um, loading things a little bit better than you were, right arm softening a little bit more, not coming out quite as fast. Um, on the right, again, a little bit more of a move towards the sort of loading pattern that I'd like to see, but the club not getting outside the right thigh quite as much. Um, mainly because of what I'm asking you to do in the in the downswing. One thing that was very apparent was that you, you increased the amount of shaft lean coming into impact a tremendous amount. So you're really keeping the handle forward. Red line is illustrating where the shaft was at setup, so you can see there it's pushed forward uh, quite a substantial amount, maybe sort of eight, nine degrees, um, which is de-lofting the club when we're not trying to play a low shot, uh, exposing the leading edge of the club into the ground, etc. etc. Also by maintaining the shaft lean excessively, the swing radius can stay potentially too short for too long, which can then produce shots that are a little bit thin. Here on the right, I've asked you to create a similar trajectory to what we see on the left, but using a far less lofty club. So suddenly you're starting to, you're starting to be in a position where you have to maintain loft, and that would be the overriding um, the overriding principle for you with your wedge is swing in a manner that maintains loft. In order to do that, sometimes you can create a little bit more loft. Yes, you've added a little bit of loft at setup, move the ball forward a little bit. Shaft was still leaning forward a touch, very little difference in that. It's almost like in order to recover it, you had to load it a little bit more, which is nice, I don't mind that. Coming into impact now, the shaft returns to a position that's very, very similar to where it was at address, maybe a degree, half a degree further forward. Club passes the hands. The trajectory is not the same, but it doesn't have to be. I'm just trying to get you to engage the bounce a little bit more, maintain the loft a little bit more, recover the shaft a little bit more. So that radius that we have coming into impact starts to gradually widen as the shaft recovers allowing you to produce a little bit more of a, a wider flat spot to the arc allowing you to control the loft and the bounce so However you set up, if the ball's back and the handle's forward, we want to try and return it to that position because we should be trying to play a low shot. If the, if the ball's forward and the handle's back, we should be trying to return it to that position because, again, we're trying to play a higher, softer landing shot. So that's the basic, um, basic principle, basic baseline that I want you to use. Um, establish the sort of trajectory you want at set up and then try and maintain that through the hit. There will be a little bit of variation, but we shouldn't see an excessive change in the amount of shaft lean. Um, if we have to have that, like we were seen on the left, then we're not really setting up in an appropriate manner. So maintaining loft rather than reducing loft through the hit was the basic principle. I'm gonna go on now to a few of the variables that we discussed and let you have a little look how things change during your session okay so here we've got you playing on the left a high shot high soft landing shot and on the right a low running shot um, to play the high soft landing shot you've moved the ball forward in the stance you've opened the club face and the shaft is sitting uh, relatively straight up and down relatively vertically at setup um, when you hit the lob shot the club is overtaking the hands quicker 
and the follow through arc length is shorter so the butt of the club is nearer to you and that is uh, an essential bit of kit because it allows you to engage the bounce maintain the loft and shift the swing left therefore just steepening the angle of attack ever so slightly to accommodate that ball being very forward so we've got a very shallow setup balls well forward shafts vertical stroke hanging back stance is wider so we need to just move that low point forward a fraction so having a little bit of a shorter arc encourages a lot of good things when you're playing a lob shot if you're trying to play a lob shot with a long arc that's not going to work um, with a, a low running shot we've got the shaft leaning forward we've got the ball back we've got the stance narrower therefore the angle of attack now is going to be a little bit steeper a little bit more up and down so we need to encourage the club to come out of the ground we want to maintain the less lofted condition we've achieved at setup so therefore the overtaking rate will be reduced and the arc length, the butt of the club is further away so the arc length is stronger or longer I should say on the way through and the overtaking is reduced. Uh, in this instance I asked you to play um, a low running shot which you did. You can see there you've got a certain sort of position on the through swing. I then ask you to play a lower shot. Now at this point we haven't really talked about arc length a great deal and overtaking. So I ask you to hit it a little bit lower. You can see that as you do that the overtaking reduced a little bit more. So the arc length is not necessarily, the arc length is a little bit longer. Certainly the overtaking is less. And then I came in and I asked you to really hit a low one. Uh, not going to come out that low. But the feeling was to try and hit it beneath the level of that golf club. Ball goes back, handle goes forward. That relationship is then maintained through the hit. Because we want to keep the loft off the golf club. And the overtaking rate again has become less. And the arc length has become a little bit longer so the length of arc on the through swing and the degree of overtaking on the through swing depends largely on what type of shot you're playing um, to advise players and, and to try and go and chip keeping the left wrist firm all the time um, not allowing the club to pass the hands all the time is just is just wrong um, depends on what shot you you face with what scenario you're in and what you're trying to achieve what you're trying to do is what we were discussing briefly on uh, on Facebook the other day with Thomas Klang is you're trying to match up your components uh, a ball back a handle forward a long arc a minimal overtaking is very appropriate for a low running golf shot the stance wider the ball forward the shaft vertical, increased overtaking and a shorter arc is very appropriate for a high soft landing shot, say over a bunker. So, you know, fitting in around what shot you're trying to play, using the variables and as we discussed, I think it's fair to say that um, back in the day when we were taught to chip, people were told to put the ball back, handle forward, keep it there, etc. Um, and then never really had any sort of, no, nothing was elaborated on. Some players figured it out, um, which you would have done, I would have done through chipping comps as juniors and as young professionals. And then when you start to do that less because of life commitments, you suddenly realise that you don't really understand why you were a good chipper uh, or pitcher in the first place. And then you start grasping at straws from shot to shot. The drill that I gave you well, one of the drills that we discussed, which I think is great for you, is where you line up maybe nine golf balls, seven golf balls, where well, we've got seven in this instance, and just hit some varying shots. Start off, pull the middle ball out, 
just treat that as your standard shot. That technique's looking a lot better already. Medium length arc, a little bit of overtaking, but nothing massive. Then once you've done that, move to the ball that's furthest back. Don't really move your foot position much. Steeper angle of attack. More shaft lean at impact. Less overtaking on the way through. Very much what, you, what you'd expect to see. Then move the ball forward. Shaft more vertical, leaning back slightly. You're instinctively lengthening and shortening the swing, just anticipating you know, the need for more power as the ball slides up the club face. Shaft returns to a more vertical position. Overtaking rate increases. Length of arc is shorter. So on the left, you've got the ball the most forward. On the right, you've got the ball the most back. Uh, is either one of those right or wrong? No, just appropriate. You see the knees are flexing a little bit more on the left uh, to allow you to sort of shift the plane to the left and stay down um, through the shot. On the right hand side, the legs are a little bit straighter, you look a little bit taller at setup because you're trying to encourage the club to come out the ground a little bit more. Play around with that drill, uh, experiment with different trajectories. And just remember that you're trying to match up your components. Uh, it's not just ball position and the location. Each time when you do this in the drill, when the ball's back, the shaft's leaning forward, you want to try and return it to that position. And then when you play the ball up in the stance for the high soft landing one again we want to try and make sure that during the downswing or during the through swing we return the club return the shaft again to a very similar position so the shaft's sitting a little bit more vertically at impact rather than leaning forward at impact it doesn't have to be the same, but it should certainly resemble the type of shot that you're trying to play. Um, if you start trying to play a high soft landing shot with a shaft lean that you see on the left, you're going to need to a really um, very lofted wedge in your bag. Um, you're not going to be very versatile. If you start trying to play a low runner with the shaft angle that you see on your right, you're going to tend to catch the ball a little bit, ground a little bit before the ball, uh, or thin the odd shot. In, in a sort of in an attempt to stop that happening so matching up the shaft angles that were established at address through impact is the the main thing that you need to do you need to appreciate what variables could be causing your problems i.e you could be overtaking too fast you could be hanging on to the shaft angle too much you'll soon figure that out keep moving around within the spectrum of shots you'll start to get the feels uh, required for each one You'll start to sort of get a feel for what you're good at, what you're not so good at, what you need to be working more on, what shots you need to go looking for in tournaments, and what shots you need to maybe sort of not shy away from, but be on sort of red alert when you're faced with them. Um, so at least you've got a little bit of a system in place to help you with your chipping. Good luck with it. If you've got any questions, which undoubtedly you will have at some point, feel free to get in touch and I look forward to further sessions through the winter months. Well done.